Greeting folks, as part of the introduction of the auto build functionality for the ABCIP OI server, I will be sharing a set of getting started tips. Without further delay, let's start with tip number one, product supported. Auto build is supported by the Allen Bradley ABCIP OI server generation 2.0. In order to install the OI server, you must first install the OI core 2.0, which is the second generation of the OI core. Tip number two, auto build is available for the Allen Bradley RS Logix 5000 series of controllers. Other controllers are not supported. Tip number three, auto build has very tight integration with Wonderware application server 2014 R2 SP1 or newer. Please follow the prerequisites listed on the screen to ensure a successful installation. Tip number four, please remember that we now have the information posted in the online compatibility matrix you can access the online compatibility matrix through the readme file or through the GCS Product Hub website and all the information is kept there and updated as necessary. Tip number five, accessing auto build. From the system management console, we'll go to the operations integration server manager and expand the Allen Bradley tree. I already have some configuration to some controllers configured. I should note, as we mentioned earlier, that only those controllers that support auto build will show the auto build tab. Those that do not, in this case a MicroLogix controller, will not show that tab. So keep that in mind as the auto build tab is in the uh, last leaf of the node connection. Tip number six, online versus offline mode. If you want to get through the workflow very quickly, you want to leverage online mode. But if you want a little bit more information, Make sure you take a look at differences between online and offline mode. The online mode does exclude a few things such as tag descriptions and also does not filter enough information. For offline mode, you need to pick a file that has been exported from the PLC program and is the L5X file. So in that case, we can use that. For this particular example, we're going to leverage the online mode. Tip number seven, the target project or the target galaxy. You want to ensure initially that you are targeting a, a newly created galaxy. As you get familiarized with the concepts and the outcomes of auto build, you can then move into a galaxy that you have already created. In addition, we leverage the connectivity that you have already created for this particular controller. So if you look at the scan groups here, those are the ones that are shown for this particular project. Tip number eight, using the two letter prefix. After you have selected the Galaxy in the device group, there's an option here to enter a two-letter prefix. You may want to use that in the case, for example, where you have identical controllers in the field, or you also want to parade the data as you create the structures in your project. So in this example, we're going to use a two-letter prefix. Tip number nine, pre-check validation. Auto build will display any conflicts that it finds with respect to naming convention or the length of characters. Length of characters cannot exceed 32 characters in application server, so we protect that here. You can choose to go to the PLC and make your changes, or you can proceed, and anything that has been found to have a conflict will be skipped. Tip number 10, leverage the selection options. In step number three of the auto build process is where you actually make the selection of the templates and instances that you upload into your project. Here you can, for example, select everything, everything that is selected will have the templates and instances selected, or maybe you just want to update the templates only, which clears all the instances out. These are bulk selections. You can also choose to clear everything that you have selected, and potentially if you only want to display those templates that have just instances created for them, you can do that too. You can also use the uh, search filter to narrow down your selection if necessary. Let's now run through an example. We're actually going to select this particular template, reactor set, and notice that under reactor set, there's actually a nested set of templates, reactor and storage tank. We can actually select those individually. We can select the entire set. And as we select anything that has a nested template in it, that would also get selected. And we're only going to select a subset of the instance that we're going to build later on. Tip number 11, 
one auto build execution at a time. Given the fact that auto build is an extraordinary engineering efficiency tool, while the build is in progress, you may actually be tempted to launch another system management console and run auto build in parallel. We would actually block this execution and prevent you from running another session in progress again to protect the build process. Tip number 12, application server templates and instances. Now that the build is complete, let's switch over to the IDE in application server and see a few of the things in the outcome that you should be aware of. First is the template toolbox tool set where all the templates are stored. It's in the tool set called PLC templates. All those are stored in here. You will also notice in the deployment view that uh, there's a whole bunch of objects in here. A few of those were already pre-existing, but the ones that we were just that we just created were the ones based on the two-letter prefix I and D. You'll notice that there's a DI object that is used actually for the communication with uh, the OI server as well as an area that actually contains the objects that we just created, the reactor 31 and reactor 32, each one with their contained structure. Speaking about the contained structure, if we go to the derivation view, you will also notice that we use the best engineering practices for the creation of this. We create two levels of derivation for the user defined objects before actually starting creating the objects through the auto build process. This is basically support the, either the corp level or site standards that may come from a higher level. So all those are here with the respective IDs uh, built in front of them. Tip number 13, leveraging IO auto assignment. You'll notice in the deployment view that we have a DI object that we can actually now set to the engine, deploy it and test the connectivity to the controller even before we have to do anything else. Now we can go to the IO assignment view, check this DI object, and verify that the references are correct. Tip number 14, updating an existing template. After the initial configuration, I actually went ahead and modified the reactor set template. I added a script and I also added a graphic, which we'll uh, see here shortly. Now the key here is that I can go back to the SMC and make the changes as necessary. I'm actually going to add two of the uh, parameters that I didn't have before and add the third instance. And now we're going to just run auto build again. Now that the auto build process has been completed, we can go back to the IDE and verify the changes that were made to the template. We can see here that the two attributes were added and in addition, neither the scripts nor the graphics were affected by the changes that were done in AutoBuild. And that wraps it up for the AutoBuild Getting Started tips. Thanks for watching.